You know, one of the questions I get asked pretty often is about prayer. And in particular, there are three things I'd like to address about prayer. Number one is what is prayer? Number two is why should I pray? And number three is, is there a right way and a wrong way to pray? Now, I would like to get to all of these things. And in particular, I want to draw your attention to the gospel of the Pharisee and the tax collector who both went to the temple area to pray. You can find this parable in the gospel of St. Luke chapter 18. Now, all these three questions are great questions because, you know, we see there is a right way to pray and there is a wrong way to pray and certain things about prayer as well. So let's get into it. Question number one, what is prayer? Well, prayer, simply put, is talking to God. It is our way of communicating with God. You see, prayer is a way for us to tell God exactly what we want and how we feel at that very moment. It's for us and God to come together, right, in prayer. So think of it this way. Oftentimes, every day, we communicate with people, right? We come to our friend and we say, hey, hello, how's it going? You know, and we talk stories and different things, right? Well, it's the same way when we come to God in the silence or in the chapel or in the church, we communicate with God. We share with God our joys, our happiness, but we also share with God our struggles, our pain, everything that we're going through. You know, in the same way as we communicate with other people, well, prayer is a way for us to communicate with God. Now, number two is, why should I pray? Well, perhaps you've heard of the phrase before, well, I want to do God's will in my life. I, I want to do God's will in my life every day. Now, the question is this, well, how do you know what God's will is, right? And the answer is pretty simple. Well, through prayer, through prayer, through reflection, through asking God to help lead and guide you and to give you the wisdom and the Holy Spirit to know what to do in your life. And you see, prayer leads us to faith. It begins with faith and it leads us to deeper faith deeper into communion with God. And so when we pray, we communicate with God, like number one there, but we should pray because we come closer and closer and closer to God. And, and you know, um, a, a joy-filled life and a happy life is one in which we come closer and closer and closer to God each and every day. Which then points us to question number three, right? Question number three, is there a right way to pray and is there a wrong way to pray? And the answer to this is yes, there's a right way to pray and yes, there's a wrong way to pray. And you know, this can go on for very long, but I simply wanna draw your attention to the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector coming to the temple area to pray in the gospel of St. Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. You see, the parable goes something like this. There are two people, the Pharisees and the tax collector, they both come to the temple area to pray, right? And one came home justified, and that person who came home justified happened to be the tax collector, which is kind of ironic, right? He's a sinner, versus the Pharisees who is righteous. But then if we go deeper into this question, we see exactly what's going on. Take a look at the prayer of the Pharisee. Here's what he says. Oh God, I thank you that I'm not like the rest of humanity, right? I'm not greedy. I'm not dishonest. I'm not adulterous or even like that tax collector right over there, right? I fast twice a week and I pay tithes on my whole income. Now listen to his prayer for a moment. And what do you notice? Everything that the Pharisee said is probably true, but you notice something's wrong with his prayer. You see, it's all focused inwards. It's all focused on him, like me, 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 and more of me, right? His prayer consists of praising himself and of criticizing other people, right? His neighbor, oh, look at that tax collector there. He's a sinner, right? And he has no regard for God. Now, I want you to imagine for a moment, because we read this parable and we know uh, what the prayer of the tax collector is, but I want you to imagine for a moment, what if that tax collector prayed like the Pharisee? What would he say? Maybe he would say something like this. Oh God, I thank you that I'm not like the rest of humanity, even though I'm greedy, but I'm not that greedy like other tax collectors, right? Or even though I steal, but I don't steal that much like other people. Or, you know, look, I give to the poor and that other tax collector doesn't. 
or I'm way better than these people here because at least I go and pray and they don't even do that. And even though I'm a sinner too, I'm still a good person, God. What if that tax collector prayed like that? Think about it for a moment. You see, there's a right way to pray and there's not a, a not so right way to pray. Now, what happens if the tax collector prayed this way? Would it be any different than the Pharisee? Would his actions be justified? No, right? So there is an incorrect way to pray. So the wrong way to pray is to come to God, to come in the presence of God, and to tell God how great and how wonderful and how good we are, everything that we've done. But then, you know, don't mention anything bad, right? Oh, I'm not a sinner. Oh, I don't do this. Or we try to justify all of our sins and our actions. That's the wrong way to pray. Let me give you a clear example and that will help you to understand the point I'm trying to get at. You see, so oftentimes we fail to see our faults and our sins. And you know, as a, as a priest for many years and listening in the confessional, I can tell you people come all the time and they would approach it something like this. They'd come in the confessional and say, well, you know, I've sinned. It's been a year since my last confession, but you know, I haven't done anything wrong. I haven't stolen. I haven't committed adultery. I haven't done anything bad to anybody. And I'm generally a good person. I even help out in my community and I even do all these great and wonderful things, you know, and sometimes they'll go on and on and on. And then, you know, comes the question, well, what about your sins? What do you want to ask God for forgiveness and for mercy for? Oh, you know, I, I, I don't know. Uh, probably nothing. I didn't do anything wrong. You know, I'm a good guy. All these things on and on and on. And you know, sometimes we're just like that. You know, we focus so much on the positive that we fail to see our mistakes and our sins and our need for God's mercy. So here's my point. So oftentimes we come to God and we try to justify our actions in front of God. And sometimes even worse, we come to God and we start comparing ourselves to others. Say, well, God, you know what? Even though, you know, I, I committed adultery once, but look at my neighbor, he committed adultery a hundred times, right? Or, you know, I, I only stole $10, he stole a hundred, you know, on and on and on, right? And if the tax collector prayed this very same way as the Pharisee, then he wouldn't be justified. You see, his attitude, if it's the same as the Pharisee, he wouldn't be justified. And so notice then in this parable, it's very interesting because Jesus teaches us the right way to pray. So what is the right way to pray? Take a look at the tax collector. His prayer is simply this, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Now this is the right way to pray. Why? Because when we come before God, when we are truly in the presence of God, we recognize our sinfulness and we recognize our need for God, our need for God's mercy. In fact, if we don't know ourselves enough, then you know we come and we say, well, God, look, all these things I've done. But when we know ourselves enough, when we know our weaknesses, when we know our sins, and when we know God personally, how great and powerful he is, then we come to God and we ask for his mercy and his forgiveness. That's the beauty of the prayer of the tax collector, right? He knows the depth of his sin and he knows that he is in need of God's mercy. Now in the prayer of the tax collector, Jesus isn't necessarily praising the sin of the tax collector, right? So oftentimes people say, well, look, Jesus praising his sin. No, not at all. Instead, Jesus is telling us that the tax collector recognized who he is, that he is a sinner before God. That's the most important thing. He's a sinner before God and in his sinfulness, he needs God's mercy and forgiveness. That's why he came home justified. Now, in your own prayer before God, there's no need to justify your actions and your sins. Ask for God's mercy and for him to help you to do better each day. May God bless you.